few general points about logistic regression. Particularly if you fit a lot of, you know, if you were to use all the variables in your model, um, you might get quite good predictions on your data set, but uh, would, would it predict well on another data set? You know, if it's important to know that you're going to predict well in the future, you would want to test your predictions either using another data set or to use something that's become known as cross-validation, where you take out subsets of the data in turn and then you train your data on one part of the data set, test it on the other part of the data set, so you get a fairer assessment of how well the model is likely to do if you were to use it on a separate data set. So it can be a bit deceptive if you were to put a vast number of variables in, you've got almost perfect predictions, you might think your model's doing really well, but uh, you put it on another data set, it, it may not do anything like as well because you've got overfitting. And yeah, if you've fitted a lot of variables, you need to bear in mind you're adjusting for a large number of variables, so you need to take care when interpreting the results for individual variables. So for example, if we just fit peripheral vascular disease on its own without doing any adjustments, we get a really high odds ratio. When we adjusted for age, gender and smoking in the model we just had, the odds ratio is well, still definitely significant, but it's not quite as high. But you might think that was appropriate, age, gender and smoking, they're not medical measurements. So uh, you do want to be sure that the groups you're comparing are peripheral vascular disease are similar in terms of age, gender and smoking. So that probably was a sensible model. But if that model that adjusted for all other variables, the odds ratio for peripheral vascular disease actually became non-significant. It's still greater than one, so it's still estimating more odds of death on peripheral vascular disease, but it's not significant. And in that case, you've probably over-adjusted because you've adjusted for all sorts of other types of disease, including heart, dis you know, cardiovascular diseases, and which are associated with peripheral vascular disease. So you've probably got rid of some of the effect of peripheral vascular disease that you're interested in. So you um, need to be a bit careful if you're interpreting the factors in your model to bear in mind what you've adjusted for. This is just a note. I think last time I said if you've got a confidence interval and it didn't overlap zero, it would be equivalent to having a significant result at the 5% level. And well, for odds ratios, the equivalent number is 1, because an odds ratio of 1 means there's no difference between, say, smokers and non-smokers and an odds ratio of greater than one, you've got a higher risk. But if this confidence interval that you can get for your odds ratio, if it doesn't overlap one, it's equivalent to having a significant, statistically significant result. And so it's only the last one that, where we adjusted for absolutely everything. Our confidence interval now overlaps one, it's quite wide, and we've got a non-significant result to go with that. So that's just to show the analogy between, we've got a similar analogy between confidence intervals and significant results, even when doing logistic regression.